Hello folks and welcome back to another program. Today uh, I'm taking a second look at my Bose 501 loudspeakers and I'm going to take you back in the history of the first 50 years of Bose and before you shut this video off I want to preface that let's try to say some positive things about Bose instead of some horrible negative things like ha like it has been uh, the past 10-20 years. What, you like listening to Bose too? Yes, in this video I am opening up the can of worms that is Bose and we're gonna get to the bottom of why people hate it in the audiophile uh, realm, which is what this channel is aiming to be and I'm including Bose as a relevant um, actual contender in the, in the, in the space of hi-fi loudspeakers. In this video, I'm going to touch on Dr. Amar Bose and his first 50 years in developing, uh, what was going to be the staple loudspeaker for the household of the 60s and the early, um, sort of innovations that he came up with alone, without a team. This is a brand that is high fidelity and a brand that is constantly willing to innovate. In the early 60s, the Bose 2201 became the first loudspeaker to be produced by the audio company. They wanted to get into the field of audio uh, and acoustics. Um, Dr. Amar Bose was uh, an MIT uh, faculty member at that point. Um, unbeknownst to him, he didn't have any interest in teaching. But he knew so much and was so knowledgeable uh, about the, the, the math behind the audio that uh, people just went along with him. They went along with his teachings. They went along with what he was saying. He became the Pied Piper of that institution. And to this day, uh, Bose still gives a, a stipend of uh, dividends of their company to MIT. And I just think that's great. And why do I like Bose so much? Why do I endorse it as I do? Steph's father went to MIT and their base of their operation base is in Framingham, Massachusetts, and I am in Easton, Massachusetts. So um, it's just all encompassing. Um, it's a local brand. I, in my mind, it's supporting a biz, big business that's local. I had the Bose Sound Dock Series 2. Uh, I would put my iPod into it and I would sit back in my room and was blown away by the sound I was getting. Um, my room had never been full, more full of music growing up because of that sound dock. My family had the sound wave, the Bose wave, wave radio. Uh, you know, my mom and aunt both had them. My grandparents had them. They, they liked Bose and I always grew up thinking it was a high fidelity company, a um, company worth putting money into and you know, um, worth giving a shot and considering it relevant in today's space. I think that they are completely wrong when they say that Bose is no highs, no lows. Must be Bose is the phrase that all audiophiles seem to lean toward. Um, and I am against that. I don't agree with it. I don't agree with it at all. These Bose 501 Series 2 loudspeakers are nothing but highs and mids and a lot of bass and lows. Um, it rumbles the house. Um, I just feel like there's so much treble bouncing off my walls and toward me that I can hear every little, little decibel of treble in every piece of music that I play. And I have no complaints with the Bose 501s. It turns out Dr. Amar Bose failed at the beginning of the process of dipping his toe into the audio space. Um, with his first 2201 loudspeaker produced in 1966 in the first small building, Dr. Amar put his special touch into every single one of the produced 2201 speakers in the early 60s. He himself built them by hand, um, either a piece of them or the whole thing at times. And the fact of it is, is no one bought them. Nobody bought them. Another factor is the price of it. People thought the things were so overpriced compared to other speakers, just as good if not better, like JBL and La Scala's and, and, and those type of things. Those type, even, even Sony's were comparable. People want a versatility factor in their speaker that they can put it anywhere. 
Thus, the stands were created for the Bose 901 um, speakers, which he developed on his own. After failing with the 2201s, he took a time to reflect and time to go home and just think of the math. He thought of every single aspect and he put his heart and life and blood, sweat and tears, so to say, into these 901s. And they're respectable till this day. Uh, people still like the Bose 901. In the first 50 years of Bose, people considered that company to be audiophile quality and to be high fidelity. Definitely something I want to check out in the future, uh, the, the 901s with the stands. I think those are pretty cool. New things is what Dr. Amar uh, Bose always um, touched upon and always tried to drive home with all of his students and employees. And so his little innovative ways of reflecting sound and trying to get the consumer to have the fullest sound that they possibly can have in the early 60s is something that nowadays just gets muddled and people just think it's a bunch of you know hoopla and snake oil and don't don't really put any stock into that that science behind it of reflecting nowadays people's rooms are full of crap and there's no reflecting space if they don't see the relevancy in it anymore because they just want a speaker that's going to sound amazing in any room that's 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 the fact of it and and for these exact speakers the, anything that reflects um, sound off of walls that are maybe the tweeters are facing the walls and not you um, is a problem to some because some rooms are cluttered with a bunch of coats and bags and uh, you know book bags and people's stuff and shoes and clothes and uh, you know whatever is in your space and now that is hindered because you didn't have enough room to have a speaker space dedicated toward the best sound that these can produce and you need space you need a space for these and i am lucky enough to have had that space um, in this little breezeway here so more than lucky and more than happy with the sound that they produce they fill the house uh, there are certain recordings where i've said in a past video it just sounds like there's a marimba and a, a, a uh, a uh, xylophone right in the listening space in the in the room um, unbelievable sound unbelievable sound that these produce right after the success of the Bose 901s Dr. Bose was into developing the perfect noise canceling headphones as he was on a flight and they just started to bring you headphones and the headphones they were bringing on that flight were not up to par and so an idea struck in his head and he started to jot down notes. Um, uh, somebody sitting next to him just um, mentioned that he just started to rifle down ideas about headphones and how to get perfect noise canceling quality out of them so you don't hear anything regarding the engine of the plane, any passenger noise, anything. And they succeeded um, and then some is what I'll say is people just love the noise canceling headphones. I just got Stephanie this Bluetooth pair of Bose um, noise canceling headphones and gosh, it's it's like subatomic when you put that, uh, it, it's like you're in another complete space when you put the noise, when you hit the button to make the noise canceling happen. People sort of turned away. They turned their heads. They said the La Scala's came out. These La Scala's are fantastic. The JBL speaker is amazing with its uh, foam grill in the front and you know that specific picture that happened. It was the leader in the audio space. In that famous audio photograph, um, it is not Bose that is featured. It is JBL. The JBL speaker um, was the leader and people turned away and it's sad and it's something that I don't want to happen I keep bows alive as soon as I found these I, I was so excited I needed to have them I ditched my Sony's uh, you'll see my Sony tower speakers in um, my hi-fi done cheap video um, and I soon got these right after um, and I, I'll never go back there. The, the stereo quality is fantastic. They are a bit high. They're a bit um, t 
tinny and midi and you have to sort of play around with this depending on the recording you put on you gotta sort of play around with your um, receiver to get the perfect perfect blend that isn't to say that these speakers have the this effect with it with the things at all no it's more big it's a bigger sound it's like someone's actually in the room and um, there's never that mid kind of uh, you know loudspeaker effect that um, that bullhorn effect that you can sometimes hear with speakers um, not that way at all so once you do get the perfect perfect blend on your um, either the loudness features on or the loudness is off and you get the treble and bass perfect you are set and you have an you have yourself an audio experience like none other and you'll hear your recording in the best way it can possibly be heard and um, but the fact of it is, audio is subjective to everyone. What, some, what one person might find fantastic, another person might find flaws in. And that's the thing of it, it's just like food. Um, you know, some people might think, oh, this is delicious, and then other people, it's not for them. And a lot of the audiophiles nowadays, Bose is not for them. They don't believe in the gimmicky, hokey science to it. They think it's just a, a bunch of, uh, you know, ways to seem innovative and it's not really doing much of anything. Uh, that's how they feel. Um, but once you um, set these up perfectly, as you notice, I have sort of a diamond shape going on with my, uh, with my 501s. Um, that's the way that they fit best in the room. The treble bounces backward and forward backward and forward on either side toward toward me um, listening a set of two tweeters and one um, sub woofer on the on the bottom and the two subs are faced like this in my setup and the tweeters face backward and and then they bounce out and I don't know what it is but it makes it so um, clear the clarity I can hear every single bit of of um, treble in everything that I almost have to turn that down. I was looking for a warmer sound when it came to vinyl, as everyone says, that warm vinyl sound. And I don't so much get that with these bows. They're, they're very loud and um, abrasive to the ears sometimes. I find that I can listen to any genre of music pretty much for the most part and get the best experience out of every single one of those recordings. Uh, it's like savoring up a, a pot of beautiful sauce when I hear this. Like that's one of my favorite things. It's like sopping up something amazing. Uh, it's syrupy and lush and full. The sound is incredible and loud and um, also great at low uh, volumes as well. They don't get lost in, in, a, in a crowded room. They don't become background um, noise and just background music, uh, as some would argue. Um, a good pal of mine uh, always said that Bose um, is just glorified background sort of speakers. For That's why you see them in restaurants in the top. Uh, you know, you're going to look up at a ceiling in a restaurant and there are Bose, the Bose hi-hat speakers. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I never had a problem with them. I always found them to be excellent, to be honest with you. I consider my ear to be more than trained. I grew up playing the piano. I play the a myriad of instruments, guitar, bass, drums, uh, and I record music. Um, my ear is somewhat trained. These ears of mine love the Bose loudspeakers. Um, I, I know that People turned away when it came to the 501 Series 2 and 3, uh, and, and it more became about audio in cars and in the, in the, um, in the sound wave, in the docks, in, the, in the, the wave, and these. But I like to keep the loudspeakers alive, and I play them each and every day with pride that I own Bose. I'm sure some of you have already turned off this video by now, and if you have, you have. That's all right. Watch some other videos um, that I've got. Y you know, watch somebody else's video that's gonna rather crap on Bose, but I'm not. 
I love bows, and I always have since I was a kid. Um, and it hits very close to home uh, with Steph's father um, being an MIT grad and Dr. Bowes having that smart innovation that he did to, to prevail, to be different, to want to strive for something greater. Uh, that's, the, that's the American dream. That's the, that's the dream. And I am all for that. I back that 150%. And I love these speakers. Um, they are a 10 out of 10. Although I do think I need to uh, re recone the sub of one of them. Um, y you know, they, they're old. They're about 30 years old or more. Uh, 71, these came out, and that's when they're from. Uh, and I think I need to um, recone one of them and, uh, you know, sort of glue, put new glue in and, uh, you know, do one of the um, subwoofers. is a little rattly nowadays. But doesn't always happen it happens now and again you know they're second hand i mean i'm lucky enough where it doesn't happen constantly but every now and again with a certain recording a certain amount of bass that's that's played uh they'll rumble a little bit and and um rattle you have to do it with any old speaker because over time that just it degrades and that's all i gotta say about bose don't hate on it uh find something constructive to say about it or don't say anything at all um I am proud to be in the same state where the uh, developing plant is located, and um, I think Dr. Bose was, um, was quite an innovative guy. I think that's inspiring to all of us, to be honest, so. Until my next video, you can find me lounging to a melody. Take care, folks, and bye-bye. again folks for checking out this episode if you do feel so inclined as to follow me on social media you may gladly do so at manza media art and manza media on every other platform if you like prints i've got an etsy shop where you can pick up some of my original artwork and fan artwork i'll catch you folks on the next episode of manza media